This is Jenny and Luke. Lucas. How old is Lucas? Uh, he's six weeks old. Just the right size. He's so little. And he's so cute. Okay. Now, the very first thing we want to do is make sure that Mom can hold the baby in a position where we can get the arm down. Oh, don't be crying now. You're going to like this. So this will work right here. On little, on little babies, little eight-ounce clear cups work just fine. Now hold enough material, and you can see if the baby's hand is touching the side. Now all we do is measure out eight ounces of water, and twice that by volume of alginate. If you have a scale. The ratio is always pound of water to five ounces of alginate. And approximate, you can approximate that by simply using twice the volume of the alginate to the water. Put the, put the water into a little bit larger container and dump in the alginate. I like to time this so I know what's going on, and I use a, I use a dark room timer because I can look up and see the time instantly. But any clock with a sweet second hand is all you need. Mix it until it's Appears to be creamy smooth. Dump it back into the cup. Okay, let me see you look at him. Now you push his hand in, try and spread a little alginate on the hand to get rid of any bubbles, and then push it down inside. And babies this age are usually very clean. Now, Morgan, would you look around make sure you're not touching the other side there, please? Can you see him? Okay. And sometimes if you wiggle this just a little bit, the baby's hand will stop moving. If you hold it still, the baby's hand sometimes will move. But if you start shaking like this, apparently you're doing the wiggling for them and they simply stop. It's starting to gel now. And that's only been about two minutes. Once it's gelled, you probably can't hurt it by trying to move his little hand. But I'm gonna let it sit here for about another minute, as long as he's good, before I pull it out, because it gets considerably stronger the longer you can let it sit. Okay, now very gently tug. Don't pull hard, because remember, babies are pretty fragile. Very gently, yeah, he's coming out, and he'll use the pull if you do this, and then he'll let go. Okay, come on. Don't make a wire. There we go. And you can look in and see if there are any obvious flaws or bubbles. And it looks very good. His hand was in a little fist, and it looks very good. Success. Even on a very young baby that size, the foot is too long to fit in the same size container. And even these one pint containers, it's, it's too long to fit into. However, what does work very well, generally, is a milk carton, or in this case, an orange juice carton, cut down. This is just usually big enough to work just fine for the foot. And to find and figure out how much alginate you're going to need, again, the volume of alginate in here it's going to be what it takes. And then I'll simply use the same amount of water when I mix this in just a moment. We'll have plenty room in here. No sweat. Mm. I've already measured out the alginate to fill this cup. And I'll fill this full of water. Dump it in. Put in the alginate. Stir it again with the whisk.
Okay. Just get a little spread a little over by hand to get rid of bubbles on the surface. And then we just push his little foot into the warm alginate. Yeah. You're fine. Yeah. Yeah. You seem okay, don't you? Let's just pull your little foot out. Pull it out. There it goes. Here it's pretty. Now, if the foot comes out nice and clean, that means you almost certainly have a nice, clean casting. And it looks good. His toes are clean. It looks real good. Now, to measure, measure out and mix the plaster, we will use one cup of water, just about two cups of plaster. It's almost a one to two ratio instead of a one to one ratio. Now, one of the tricks is to get this into the mold with as few bubbles as possible. As I stir this, I'm introducing bubbles into the plaster. But if you just shake this and stir it, most of the bubbles will come up out of it. Make sure, here's the foot mold. And if you hold it up, you can see that the foot is going down into this way, into the mold. So I want to hold this up, and the toes may be sticking up a little bit. So I want to put this in, stand it up, and make sure the plaster runs down into the mold. And down into the toes. And then you tip it slowly as I fill it so it stays in there. And the same is true in the hand. Look and see which way the, the fingers curl. Dump enough in, and tip it up. Tap it and shake it to try to make sure that the plaster goes in around where the, finger, the tips of the fingers are. Otherwise, you may end up with a little air bubble on the tips of the fingers. Again, I'm holding my thumb there to keep it kind of full. Fill it to the top. Now, you can swirl this around and around, which will drive the bubbles actually to the center because the bubbles are lighter than the plaster. And hopefully you'll have a nice smooth surface on the edge. Once you've done that, swirl this one around and around as well. Tap it a little bit. Don't see any bubbles coming up. Then just let them sit until the plaster is set up. And don't be in a hurry. You can let them sit for a good half hour. Pick them out too quickly, you'll tend to break off the fingers and toes. So just be patient at this point, let them sit. An easy way to tell when it's time to demold the mold the plaster is the plaster is very exothermic and it puts out a lot of heat when it sets up. When it starts to cool back down again, it's usually strong enough to demold it. I'll just cut the cut it out of the alginate. And rather than use something very sharp, such as this, because you can cut the plaster with a box cutter, an easy way to do it is to take a craft stick and cut a knife out of the craft stick. And it will easily cut the alginate but it, it, it's not nearly as likely to cut into the plaster. And take your time doing this. If you rush it, you may break fingers and toes off. So take your time. Doing the foot first, because the foot is a little bit easier to do than the hand. Pulling it back slowly and then cutting it away I don't just try and pull the foot out, or if the toes are have some alginate between them, which they will have at least some, there's a chance you're going to break off the toe. And they can be repaired, but you want to make as little extra work for yourself as possible. Do I feel like you're doing something more? Yet? 
very gently. Now, if you remember what I said about getting the air out, there's a little, there's a bubble here, and and uh, we'll show you how to repair that in just a second. Now we'll do the hand. Just stir it here until it it's, uh, feels about the way it was when you when you made the casting. What you do is spray some water on the piece because plaster, once it dries, really likes to soak up water. And it'll soak the water right out of this new plaster if you're not careful. And you put a little bit of plaster in place. And then just smooth it out and with just a little practice you can repair things you can even rebuild fingertips and fingernails if you have to and, and that little spot will pretty well disappear and if you've got it wet enough that plaster will still just go ahead and get hard again you can use little dental tools to clean that up or little hobby type dental tools that you can purchase at any hobby store to help you do that.